um, I want to go on um, on the same theme that I had going the first hour. Well, hell, it's the same theme I've had going for 20 years, actually. And that is the fact now that librarians are coming under attack. You know, book burning or book banning goes hand in hand with fascism. And if there's one thing that terrorist Christians cannot stand, it's books. Fascists of all stripe hate books. That's why one of the first things they do is, is want to burn books. In addition to the fact that the books contain ideas and challenges. And that's not allowed in, in, in a fascist Christian society or a Christian terrorist society or, or, or any fascist society. The dear leader speaks, you accept, you don't question. The dear leader becomes medium hot. So books are a danger, an extreme danger to the fascist Christians today. Consequently, librarians are coming under attack. According to the New York Times, they cite as an example a high school librarian in Annandale, New Jersey. Her name's Martha Hickson. And last fall, she heard that some parents were going to call for her library to ban certain books. So she was home at night with her husband, and at 7 o'clock, she got comfortable in her recliner and turned on a live stream of the local school board meeting. Okay? And as she and her husband were watching, a parent stood up and denounced two books. One was entitled Lawn Boy. The other was entitled Gender Queer. And this parent called them pornographic. Now, both these books are award-winning books. They have LGBTQ characters, and they have frank discussions of sex. And they've been challenged around the country. But they were available at this school where Miss Hickson was a librarian, the North Hunterdon High School Library. But then it got worse. The woman who was bitching and complaining at the school board meeting called out Miss Hickson by name. Because Miss Hickson, according to the parent, had allowed the complaining parent's 16 year old son to check out the books. And the parent who was bitching and complaining, her name is Gina De DeLausent, and according to a video recording of the meeting, the parent said, quote, This amounts to an effort to groom our kids to make them more willing to participate in the heinous acts described in these books. It grooms them to accept the inappropriate advances of an adult. All right, well, you can tell right away if you've been paying attention, the word groom has taken on an entirely new meaning now, thanks to the Christian terrorists who have clustered in the QAnon faction of madness in this country. Grooming is what liberals and Democrats and, and, and um, uh, intellectuals are doing. They're snatching up children and grooming them to become perverted, according to the QAnon crazies. Now, back to Ms. Hickson. She said that while she and her husband were watching this, it literally made her sick to her stomach and gave her a tightness in her chest. She said, quote, I was stunned. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. All right, let's leave Ms. Hickson for a moment here. Um, these highly visible and politicized book bans have been exploding across the country right now. And as that's happening, librarians who, I, I, I mean, let's face it, librarians are seen as dedicated public servants in their communities. That's the way I always looked at a librarian. How about you? I have a good friend here in Atlanta who was uh, a librarian at the Fulton County Library System. Nice guy. <laughs> Got his master's in library, and sci library sciences from University of Massachusetts. Very bright man. He recently retired, and I never saw him as a, anything other than a dedicated public servant. James never made a lot of money, but he wasn't interested in that. He was interested in being a librarian and helping people 
understand or come to terms with the world around them, with literature, with, with science, with uh, being educated. There was a time, and I don't know if James told me this or if I learned it someplace else, there was a time during the Renaissance, uh, I believe it was during the Renaissance, when a fully educated person was someone who went to university and read books, the so-called great books from the great authors at the time. Um, there was not the, uh, uh, the dedicated subject material like all science or all botany or all physiology. Uh, you could do that if you wanted to, but a truly educated person was someone who went to university and read books and wrote essays, wrote uh, what we would call book reports, I guess, but, but essays about what they had read. And in the process of reading books, one became educated. And I agree with that completely, don't you? I mean, I have a daughter who's about to go off to college, but she's going to go to a liberal arts school where the focus is on generalized education. Yeah, she's going to study... Um, uh, environmental pre-law. She wants to, Molly wants to be able to prosecute the son of a bitches who are destroying the planet. And she came to that on her own, not, not because of me. <laughs> um, but I digress. Um, she'll be going to a school that focuses on literature and writing. And I think it's a great idea. But librarians now, back to the present, they're being labeled on social media, some of them as pedophiles pedophiles. They're being called out by these local filthy fascist Christian terrorist politicians. They're being reported, librarians are being reported to law enforcement officials. And some of the librarians around the country are quitting because they're being harassed online. They're getting death threats. And some librarians have been fired by school boards because the librarians refused to remove certain books from circulation. It, 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 it's, it's becoming just so pervasive, this Christian terrorism. But going after the books, read Ray, Ray, blah, 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 read Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit, four, damn it, I'm sorry, Fahrenheit 451. Go back and read Orwell's 1984 about the changing of language, the changing of meaning, uh, the elimination of anything that could be read that was not focused on Big Brother or focused on uh, fascism during the Hitler years. Um, and the director of library and media services for an independent school district in Texas, uh, Amy Usselman, she said, quote, in many communities, putting books on the shelves has become a polarizing act and is turning librarians into the, these political pawns. She added, quote, you can imagine our librarians feel scared, like their character is in question, end quote. Now, librarians, it's my understanding, are taught to uh, curate well-rounded collections of books that represent a, a range of viewpoints especially on contentious subjects, to help people learn the process of critical thinking. That's according to the American Library Association. And in order to curate these particular collections, um, librarians use award lists, you know, what books have gotten, what awards, reviews of books by national reviewers or people who write reviews of books for magazines or newspapers, uh, they use all sorts of other publications, librarians do, to inform their choices. Now, they are first to admit, librarians are, that handling these challenges to books has always been part of their job. But they maintain that efforts to ban books have spiked in recent months. And according to these librarians, this reflects a clash over whether and how to teach children about issues like lesbian and gay rights or racial inequality that is, let's face it, the foundation of this country. It just is. The uh, 
American Library Association tracked a bunch of books. They tracked 1,597 books that were challenged just last year. And that's the highest number since the Library Association began tracking these bans a quarter of a century ago. Now, to be clear and to be fair, traditionally, you know, concerned community members, parents, might go to a library staff to discuss a title. You know, maybe somebody would say, look, I know you have uh, Huckleberry Finn. I'm going to pick on that one in, in your library. I don't want my, my daughter to read that. She's only 11. Maybe when she's 16 or 17 and has a more under, a fuller understanding of the context in which the N-word was used and the period in which it was written, but the book was written. Okay, that's fine. And, and a parent can present a list with a child's name at the top of the books that the parent does not want taken out of the library. Okay, an individual choice. But to ban books completely is bullshit. You know it as well as I do. So back in the day, parents could often prevent their children from checking out specific books. Or to take it to the next level, if a parent thought a title should be removed from the shelves altogether, they could fill out a form that would start a reconsideration process and then the suitability of the book would be uh, reviewed by a library committee. That cons consisted of parents, maybe staff members at the school, and the idea was to sit around and discuss this, what are the pros, what are the cons, and then come to a decision. You know, democracy... That's not how it works anymore. But that's the core of Christian terrorism, not just where it concerns libraries, but where it concerns everything. You, you, your practices and standards are only those found in the Christian terrorist Bible. Any professional standards, any standards of ethics or, or good behavior are not allowed only what it says in their Bible. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.